Hi, welcome to the last segment of our um, exploration of Roman um, imperial, imperial um, art. Um, I kind of got confused, and I apologize for that, um, towards the end of my last lecture. So um, we do have one more piece um, to cover. Um, I wanted to review, um, we're entering um, the late empire. So um, with this bronze equest equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius, he was one of the last sort of great emperors of the high empire. Um, and remember these emperors like Trajan and Hadrian, um, you know, Vespasian, those um, emperors were good emperors and they, um, you know, left a lot of important monuments and architecture um, to the city of Rome, but also as a legacy as well. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons why the Roman Empire lasted as long as it, as it did is because it had a system where instead of leaving the empire to uh, a bloodline heir, um, there was a system set up where um, someone would be groomed um, for this job. And so they actually, you know, whoever became emperor was actually qualified and, um, you know, was able to, you know, you know, had good leadership skills and military strategies and, you know, had a decent personality and wasn't, um, you know, like a narcissist or some crazy person. Um, because, you know, when that happens, an empire does go down. Um, what happened was Marcus Aurelius left, decided to break away from that system and actually left his empire to his son Commodus. Um, and Commodus was just not very well mentally. Um, he was kind of a narcissist and he managed to destroy the Roman Empire within 12 years of his reign. So, um, one of the things I want you to compare is this equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius. We talked a little bit about it in our last segment, um, especially as a way of um, um, Marcus Aurelius asserting his um, sort of leadership and, and a, is a propagandist piece. So this is his son, Commodus, um, and <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite um, different, I think, in terms of the message that Commodus is sending here. Um, some of the iconography that you might not be familiar with is the club um, and the sort of skin of a, a lion. Um, and this is supposed to be Hercules. Um, so Commodus is um, representing himself as, as, as Hercules. Um, and, you know, when we look at this portrait, I think it's quite, you know, some of the things that um, aren't very um, becoming of a leader, you know, very narcissistic. Um, and just a, a kind of gaudy a little bit. So this gives you an indication of, of why um, the Roman Empire sort of fell, but the, and the idea of, of how Commodus saw himself. You know, he was very narcissistic and really thought he was this very heroic figure, but, you know, really wasn't. Um, additional iconography is um, these sort of apples he's holding, um, which is another reference, I think, the golden apples um, to Hercules as well. Um, so quite a different portrait, not a very, um, I think, um, you know, compared to some of the other portraits we've looked at, like Augustus of Prima Porta, the equestrian statue I just showed. Those were done, I think, in a very, you know, thoughtful, sophisticated, sophisticated way and had a very important message. You know, yes, it was propagandist, um, but it was well done, you know, and, and to inspire. Um, this is definitely much more narcissistic and... Um, much more, um, I don't know the word I'm looking at, just tacky, I think is a good word. So this would be kind of tacky for, for the Roman, the late Roman period. So what happens is the, the empire starts to fall apart because um, the, the system of, um, uh, you know, of appointing an emperor has broken down. And so it's come under someone who's not capable of leading an empire. Um, so this is the piece we're going to talk about. So we get into the late Roman Empire, and this actually ushers in the age of Constantine. He's not emperor yet, um, but this kind of makes way for um, Christianity to eventually become the state religion. So what you're looking at is a sarcophagus. Um, it's a detail of it, and it's, it's known as the Ludovici Battle Sarcophagus or Great Ludovici Sarcophagus. 
Um, it's an ancient Roman sarcophagus. Remember, a sarcophagus is sort of similar to a coffin. And we saw one of those when we were looking at the Etruscan, um, in the Etruscan Empire, and we were looking at the couple reclining. Um, that's a sarcophagus as well. Um, it dates around 250 to 260 AD, um, and it was discovered um, in 1621 and named for its modern owner, um, Ludovico Ludovici. Um, the sarcophagus is a, is a late typical example in a group of about 25 late Roman battle sarcophagi. Um, the others are apparently dated, um, dated to 170 to 210, um, and they were made in Rome and, and in some cases Athens. Um, these um, examples derive from Hellenistic monuments from Pergamon um, in Asia Minor, showing um, Pergamon victories over the Gauls, um, and were all presumably commissioned um, for military commanders. Um, the undercutting of the deep relief exhibits very time-consuming drill work um, that conveys a sense of chaos and a sense of wary, open-ended victory. Um, it differs from earlier battle scenes on sarcophagi in which more shallowy carved figures are less um, convoluted and intertwined. So what we're seeing here essentially is, you know, this kind of deep carving. And then also something that's changing is this sort of um, compression, like all these people sort of push together into this space. Um, there's no sense of um, depth or illusion. Um, and this kind of throws back to a term I talked about when we were looking at um, early um, ancient Greek um, vase painting called Hora Vacui, um, and this sort of fear of negative space that the spirits could somehow come through um, and into our world. And so this term can be applied in terms of the composition of this um, piece where we don't have much negative space and all the figures are just sort of crammed in there. Um, it has some Hellenistic um, conventions in that it's very dramatic, lots of diagonals. Um, but we're also going to note some other changes as well. Um, one of the things that um, if we look closely at, and I'll try to zoom in, um, are that the faces are strikingly unclassical. Um, and the technique of deep drilling in particular is the, of deep drilling is particularly obvious um, in the manes of the horses and the shaggy hair of the barbarians. Um, so we're starting to see sort of um, this um, movement away or this sort of anti-classical approach where the faces aren't classical and you know here especially with the depiction of the Gauls, the beards. Um, so that's something that we're seeing and sort of um, foreshadowing the, the medieval period that will follow this. Um, notice the use again of whore vacui. This is the idea of the fear of negative space. Bodies are piled and cramped together. Um, so we do see a loss of uh, illusionistic empty space that we saw um, you know, start to develop with the Greeks, um, and definitely the Romans really pushed it, um, especially with their panel painting. There's no real point of interest. Um, the leader commander is not obvious, as in previous depictions. Um, we we're looking at the, the Trajan, the column of Trajan, you know, that definitely was more classical compared to this. Um, there's also starting and it might be hard to notice because all the figures are crammed together, a lack of canonical proportions. The heads and hands appear unproportionally larger um, in the figure. So we're starting to see, you know, this, this sort of refinement and sophistication that the Greeks had developed in terms of depicting the human body realistically and naturalistically, and it's starting to kind of... Um, that it's anti-classical, it's starting to be lost, where the heads here seem a bit smaller, the hands seem a little bit larger, and so the anatomical proportions are getting kind of stunted, and, and they sort of look short and squatty. Just like with the Hellenistic period um, during, the, during the Greek Empire, um, we start to see a shift in 
artistic traditions. With the Hellenistic, we saw because of the decline of that empire, more emotion, um, much more sort of dramatic scenes being depicted of various subject matter. And, and we start to see something similar happen with um, the sort of, you know, decline of the Roman Empire. Um, you know, in, in the late empire, art increasingly is depicting battles um, as being chaotic, packed, single plane scenes emphasizing dehumanized barbarians subjected merc mercilessly to Roman military might at a time, in fact, when the Roman Empire was undergoing constant invasions from external threats that led to the fall of the empire in the West. Um, so here, it's like they're tr really trying to hold on um, and, and sort of hold on to the last sort of remains of, of the Roman Empire, even though um, it is falling. Um, and so the style shift is, is thought to signify a loss in leadership in Rome an obvious economic decline. So that is our last piece. Um, we're going to end up talking about, we'll, we'll continue with Rome. We'll talk about Rome um, and sort of the transition from um, the, 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 the state religion being, um, I can't think of the word. <laughs> pagan um, to this movement in Christianity and then definitely with um, this, um, you know, Christianity becoming the state religion, um, art totally changes and shifts. So stay tuned. <laughs>